Strangers always ask me, why do you home educate? So here's the answer. Hello and welcome to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three from the UK. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we talk all things home education in the United Kingdom and neurodivergent family life in a family of five. That encompasses all sorts of things. We all do videos on cleaning, decluttering, what's in my bag, our animals, like literally everything um, that is suitable to share. And of course, home education is always at the forefront. Today, I want to talk to you about my why. And I think your why is super important. Uh, it's when, when the going gets tough, your why is what keeps you home educating. Um, it's a bit like when your kids are babies, and maybe you're breastfeeding and you're really, you're like, oh my God, because we all had those days. If you've been a breastfeeding mum, you know, I mean, I suppose even, I'm guessing even formula feeding mums have them, but, um, and it's the thing that keeps you going. Of course, if you're, and when you're breastfeeding, like I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this today. But then I remembered how much my child and I got from that relationship and it kept me going. And sometimes I would have little affirmations around reminding me of why I was doing it. And this is essentially the same thing. This, uh, finding your why, is is really crucial to on those days when maybe your motivation is lacking. So number one, the number one reason why I home educate, and these aren't in any particular order, but this is probably the one that I realised first, and that is catering to neurodivergence. So my son was about two when I suspected that he might be um, a little different to other two-year-olds that I knew and of course that what I was picking up on there was the fact that he is autistic so I was a bit like at the time I didn't know what it was it wasn't till maybe he was about five that I thought I'm, and I'd done lots of research by that point I was like I think he's autistic but it had taken a while um for me to get to that point when he was two I just thought something something's different here compared to the other two-year-olds that are in my life and I'm not sure that he will cope going to a mainstream preschool or a mainstream school. Now, when he, he did eventually go to a preschool and um, he had like a regular preschool and he absolutely hated it. Uh, I think he was there about a year and he just really, he didn't enjoy it. Like whenever there were pictures of him on the tapestry app, he just looked depressed and they were like, oh, he's fine. And what they meant was he wasn't crying, uh, but that's because he was kind of in a shutdown. And eventually we switched him to a uh, preschool that kind of was a bit more switched on to neurodivergence and he thrived. And every picture I saw, he was making a funny face or he was smiling. And uh, that was actually run by a pair of home educators, or at least they were planning to home educate. Their child was just a little bit older than Charles, just a couple of months. And they were like, oh, we're home educating. And I was like, what? Um, and yeah, it just went from there. So understanding like and, and as I had more children I realized hang on a second we are going for a hat trick here like all three of them are neurodivergent and it was just kind of a no-brainer by the time we had got into the swing of it with Charles and then Bessie was getting ready to it ready to start as well there wasn't it was an absolute no-brainer everyone was going to be home educated and it meant that everyone's neurodivergence was going to be um, accepted no one was going to be naughty no one was going to be a difficult child everyone was going to be absolutely fine and um catered to i guess number two is bullying and peer pressure um it's not really something in my experience that exists in the home education community um of course there are disagreements uh, but usually the parents are there to step in immediately and help children work things out uh, if they haven't got to a point where they can work it out themselves um a lot of people in the home education community are neurodivergent themselves uh, as are the children so it's it's not um, it's, it's not uncommon for there to be for there to be communication difference, differences, misunderstandings. But um, in my experience, I've not really exp I've only maybe heard of two or three instances, at least in my local community of bullying. Um, and it's usually because the parents there was something else going on. Parents weren't there to support the child um, who was maybe the aggressor in the situation. And um, but it's just, and I've never heard of peer pressure in the home ed community at all. Um, I think parents are super involved in most situations and it's not until children are a lot older that they tend to go out on their own. Um, children stay children longer when they're home educated. They're not exposed to all of the things that children in school are. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing or a bad thing. Personally, for me, it is a good thing. And I think it's up to you 
as a parent whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing but I am glad that my children are still quite they would be seen as young for their age but actually I think this is maybe normal and children who are at school are just older for their age um, or they're exposed to a lot more whatever but uh, bullying and peer pressure barely exists in the home education community because parents are there to support their child and support the social situations. So number three is ability to control our own schedule. This is something that's really important for us. I uh, didn't sign up to co-parent with the government. So uh, it's not something that I ever want to do. The only person I co-parent with is my husband, who uh, you can occasionally see his arm. Give us a wave, Phil. There he is. Um, he's the only person I co-parent with. He's the only person who gets to make decisions for my child other than me. And um, yeah, he, that's, that's, the, that's the dude I signed up to co-parent with. I did not want to sign up. Uh, did not sign up for co-parenting with a school um and that's one of the reasons why children have never been to school is because i didn't want to be told what i can and can't do with my own child and that includes so many things like oh you have to do this you have to do this homework you have to do this you have to pay this you have to come to this event you have to dress like this today no thank you i'll we'll do what we want thank you very much um and actually like being able to say call up their forest school and say hey we need a day off we're not coming today and them saying okay that's fine and there being no like issues with attendance or anything like that and them just saying okay that's fine have a great day I can if we need a day we can take a day if we decide on the Friday that we want to go on holiday on the Monday we can just go on holiday like we can do whatever we like whenever we like the only thing that kind of uh, predicts um predicts um, that kind of conflicts with that is Philip's work. Obviously he has to take leave, but if I wanted to just say, hey, I'm going to go and in the summer, like I'm going to go camping at a local campsite with the kids. We're not going to go to any activities. We're just going camping. Phil can still go to work. He can just take the car. Me and the kids and the dogs can disappear off and go camping and he can join us in the evenings. Like we can do that. We can do that whenever we like. And we have that freedom that is just in our, in our lives that if you go to school, you just don't. So on the theme of freedom, uh, number four is educational freedom. Now, I remember being a teenager and just a little bit older than my eldest son is now and going, why am I learning algebra? When am I going to use algebra? Why am I bothering to learn this? I can't get my head around it. I hate it. It's boring. I don't want to do it. I'm never going to use it in my life, I bet. And I remember my maths teacher, I didn't say it with quite as much attitude, but I remember my maths teacher saying, this is very important. You definitely will use it in your life. I use it all the time. She was a maths teacher. Of course she did. Um, since I left school, I've never, I've barely used any of the mathematical skills that um, I learned at like GCSE level. Um, in fact, my husband, who loves maths or loved maths when he was at school, you barely used anything either, had you? So he's got headphones in, he can't hear me. Um, yeah, so we don't have to teach algebra if we don't want to. We don't have to teach all sorts of things if we don't want to. We get to control... Uh, what our children are learning, which for some people is super important. I personally, what it means for me is that my children get to have a say in what they're learning. They don't want to learn about the Great Fire of London. They don't have to. They choose, hey, can actually we learn about um, the Scottish Rev the Scottish Risings of 1745? Then they can. Like, they can learn about that instead. Um, they don't get to, like, they don't, it's not cherry-picked education. They can learn about it all. They can learn about less of it. They can just watch a YouTube video and then be like, okay, I've learned that. Thanks a lot. Or they can do, we can go down a rabbit hole and do a massive project on it and cover the walls with pictures of stuff. We can, we can do what we need to do, what we want to do. And I think it helps children identify their passions much earlier and then go towards them. So for example, um, Charles has a couple of career options that he's thinking of that he might like to do when he's older and that's kind of where we're pointing towards but he can just switch at any point it's not like his GCSEs where he if he was at school and doing GCSEs he would like that's it you're done now you can't switch um, he can change his tack we can be like okay you don't want to do that one that's fine yep. and off we go on to a different a different path um, we at uh, my at the moment my daughter kind of has a few ideas you know she's 10 11, almost 11 she's got a few ideas of what she might want to do when she's older and um, one of those things is photography. She's really, really interested in photography, but at the moment, so um, we're getting her a camera and she gets to use my camera. And she, when she gets a phone, when she's 11, I'm gonna encourage her to take lots of pictures. And she already loves to take pictures and take videos and things. She's got a really good eye for poses and lighting, just naturally. It's not something that we've ever taught her. 
and I'm going to let her run with that and maybe she'll end up being a photographer when she's older or maybe she won't be but they get to identify those passions and try them out when they're still very young so then when they're adults there's no I was I need to find myself because home ed kids find themselves when they're children by the time they're in their 20s they already know who they are and they're always always already very solid in their sense of self and my uh, final one is half a joke and it's something that I say when strangers ask me um, and I don't want to have a conversation with them and that is term time holidays I think my dog's having a nightmare can you hear that are you okay no. I think she's okay um, so it's my thing and they say oh like why do you home educate and I'm like term time holidays and just walk away because sometimes I don't want to tell people sometimes it's none of their business sometimes I'm feeling chatty other times I'm not but term time holidays they are so cheap in comparison to term time holidays isn't it like center parks or something that it bumps up like 600 quid or something from half, the week before half term to half term he's nodding I'm putting his thumb up there we go um like we would be able to afford center parks it, not in half term we certainly would never be able to afford it outside in, in the school holidays like it's absolute madness and and the fact that you're gonna get fined I think you, like they're now threatening prison time if you do it more than once in three years or something like it's crazy and I certainly would not want my children to be in school now with those things as well like the focus on attendance if you have a child who is not set up for children who are neurodivergent it's not set up for children who are chronically ill it's not set up for families who maybe have someone else who's, got, who's chronically ill or has mental health issues or is no neurodivergent like it's just being neurodivergent or having a chronic illness already makes life an uphill climb pretty much every single day never-ending mountain of steps and um just things like that just make it even harder and it's just not something that i want to buy into the law states that it is a parent's duty in the united kingdom in uh, in england wales scotland and northern ireland it is a parent's duty they are responsible for their child's education and it is up to you whether you outsource it to school or not if you're like me and you've never sent your child to school it remains your responsibility to home educate to educate your child whether that's put them in a private school or put them in a mainstream school or whether you do online school or whether you home educate them it still remains your responsibility even when you've put them in school it still remains your responsibility to educate them legally so like why are they fining you when how can they fine you oh, I just I mean, I'm preaching to the choir. If you're watching this, you're probably already interested in home education and you think some of these things already, or you're already home educated and you're just nodding like this. You're like, yes, I agree. So there we go. Some of these points might be controversial and that's okay. I would love to hear your um, opinions of them in the comments. Tell me what's your why? Why are you home educating? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, check out my pay hip shop. I'm going to keep saying that at the end of every video. The link's in the description. Um, and hopefully uh, there might, you might find something you like. There's loads of freebies in there, so check them out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very, very soon.